Hi guys! Welcome to the 80th edition of the Chronicles of Podcast. That's right, I said 80, boys and girls. We're, we're a bit quite surprised that we've still been here and we're still here, still doing the same thing. Um, 80 editions in with 80 wonderful interviews that we've had, but uh, I suppose we should crack on. Jamie! Um, mm-hmm. I do believe that these chronicles, these chronicles right here, oh, for some reason on the tip of the old schnoz, are the chronicles of Becky Baldwin. <laughs> yeah, they are. Excellent. We better get started. Hit it! Hey, honey bunny, it's Rivka Reyes. This is Ron Wasserman, the nut that wrote Go Go Power Rangers. It's Boba Fett here. This is Molly Rennick from Living Dead Girl. It's WWE superstar legend Davy Boy Smith's daughter, Georgia Smith. Hello, this is Becky Baldwin, the bass player of Fury and Hans of Gressel, and you're listening to or watching and or watching the Chronicles of Podcast with Tom and Jamie. Laziest named food in existence. Do you think they're going to have to rotate in with a barbed cock? We're originally going to call it beef ball, but it sounded a bit weird. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the 80th edition of the Chronicles of Podcast. And are the Chronicles of Becky Baldwin. It is I, the bearded Brummy Jamie. And joining me, as always, always, is this handsome fella right here. What are these? It was a welcome home by Merciful Fate. Oh, I thought it might have been a Merciful Fate related. Yeah. I was sure it was them off Fury. It's Scott's with Tom. What's going on, guys? Hi, yeah. Hi, yeah. Jamie? Yes. What do you call a dog that could do magic? Could a dog that could do magic? Oh, this is going to be a shit joke, isn't it? Go on. I don't know. A Labracadabra door? <laughs> For fuck's sake. <laughs> I literally saw this joke on TikTok. Yeah, I was actually on TikTok. It's like I, I back and watch no. the clips. And the guy <laughs> telling the joke was like, this is the best dog joke you're ever going to hear. And he literally couldn't get the answer out for a, a good minute or two. And that's what made it so amazing. And when he actually said the answer, he went... <laughs> in fair, that might be the best dog joke ever. I I mean, yeah, it is fantastic. But it it's is just it's, it's a reaction to his delivery that made it even better. <laughs> Um, and I went, oh, I'll still have to start the show. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, that was absolutely amazing. Plagiarising our content. Yes. Woo! Woo! Plagiarising! Um, I mean, it's better than digression. I mean, it is better than digression, actually. Yeah, Directors probably, but that's it, what we used. No. For, the, for, the, for the true fans that have been here since the beginning, digression was a very hot topic in the world wow. of TCO parts. It was like a very hot topic, and now we've grown up. So, um <laughs> You know, now we've realised that we don't need silly catchphrases, Jamie, and uh, or do we? I was going to say, we do, just different ones. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jamie, I was having a conversation with Braden, right? Former guest yeah. and good friend of the show. And we got onto the topic of penises. As you and do. as we do. Okay. Uh, and we what, we what I found absolutely mental, right, is that some animals have barbed penises, okay? Yes. What female looks at that and goes, oh my God, you know what? I want you to fucking tear my insides out after you, do you know what I mean? After you've absolutely ruined me, I want you to absolutely tear my insides straight out. So, you know, because cats have barbed penises and you're like- They do, yes. No wonder they're so agitated and angry at everything all the time. (laughs) It does make sense why my cat's an asshole. Because she's yeah, female. so yeah, it does make sense. It's like a mace, isn't it? So like the big oh. fucking ball. That's what, that's what I mean. Like, what? Oh. Who, 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 oh, I, I'd, I'd be gut, I would be gutted if we, if as males had barbed penises because we, we'd never ever have sex ever. We catch it on our like, trousers all the time. Be fucking nightmare. Don't fucking think so, mate. <laughs> that's going nowhere near me. Thank you very much. When I said I want you to rip my in, destroy me insides. I didn't mean like this. Oh, you know. <laughs> I didn't mean, I didn't mean literally. <laughs> But then we got then it got weirder. How the fuck does it get weirder than talking about barbed penis? Ducks. Ducks. Ducks also have barbed penises, but ducks. Okay. A duck's cock 
is a corkscrew. Wait, what? Did you know that? <laughs> it's, no. it's corkscrew shaped. I know where I'm going. Um, I need to open a bottle of wine. This is what I mean. Could you imagine? <laughs> like, like, so when we're talking about how ducks are Tories, so, <laughs> you know, they could be like, quack, quack, yes. No, sorry, let me just insert myself inside you. And then they have to like spin, like they have to rotate around to get inside. <laughs> And then <laughs> rotate back out again. <coughs> if you think that you have that, that's how it, obviously it's not how it works, but it's just funny in my head. But like, if you think they're going to have to rotate in with a barbed cock. So as they're going into the, to the lady duck, she's like, ah, fuck. oh, Jesus Christ. Oh my God. It's like, it's, it's almost like, you know how you're like inserting a screw into the chest of drawers or something. It literally be like that. And then like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. And then, so when they're actually doing the deed then, like a, a duck's, a lady's duck's vagina can't be corkscrew shaped, surely. I was going to say, is it riveted on the inside of a thing? That's like... got to be the most painful, <laughs> most horrific experience of a duck's life. You know I mean? I'll never forget the first time, Sharon. <laughs> so, oh, I'd love to have some ducklings, but I don't know if I actually want to go through with it. <laughs> yeah, Sharon, is it? Is it? Is it? Is that? Oh, Lucy, love Lucy. You, you, you don't want to. I trust. Me, it's, it's not bloody worth it, love. Okay. They're fucking, you're screaming, then you have them and they're screaming. It's like, it's just not, it's just not fun. Your laugh's pretty much gone. It hurts. The man's just spinning around on top of you. You can't keep the mood, Sharon, I tell you. It's just weird. Exactly. <laughs> but then, like you say, but that's the Dr. Toys and they go, oh, <laughs> Betty, darling, you need that wide <laughs> open? Of course, give it here. <laughs> 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 Dave, why is there white stuff in this wine? What's, what's all this? Oh, uh, it's 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 nothing, Betty. Don't worry, Betty. You just enjoy your wine, better. Okay. The duck didn't last very long, love. It? <laughs> it's not mocking for it. Happens to the best of us, love. That's why they call me Park Minute Terry. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was a, it was just an absolutely crazy ass fucking conversation. And, um, <laughs> You know what? You know, literally like a rabbit hole. As a, like a, a rabbit. <laughs> but like, you go down a rabbit hole, and you're like, I'm just really curious as to know what. I don't know why. I don't know why. All right, it was just a conversation that was had. We investigated, and that's what we came up with. I was going to say, which one of you googled which animals have barbed penises? Because it must have happened. Well, I was just talking about cats because there were cats shrieking outside. That's how the, the whole thing started. And then Braden talking about ducks. So I had to research, and I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> Interesting. Incognito so, mode, because I don't want this in my fucking search history. Thank you. Well, there it is. It's there now, <laughs> so uh, I completely forget about private mode, so I might start getting mail in the you know, <laughs> actual post being delivered and uh, Google adverts and everything. And it's like, raise your duck rights. <laughs> I feel sorry for cats now you mention it, because they go through heat and shit where they're like, I need cat dick now, otherwise I will murder someone. Imagine craving that. That's yeah, <laughs> I need it. I need it. Oh, why did I want this? <laughs> Look, Steve, don't take a runner. Don't take a runner. <laughs> Let's get this over as fast as possible. All right, Jesus. Oh take God, cat, cat anal would be horrible, wouldn't it? Oh. Ooh. Anyway, let's move Ooh. on. That's getting weird. Oh. Uh, do you know what? Uh, like, <laughs> I also <laughs> realised this started to happen as well, which is, oh. I think, is the most mental thing, some of the most mental things that we do as humans. Jamie, when captions come up on TV at the end, like documentaries, they are like, he was murdered. So April 21, he was jailed for life. Yeah? Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His mother went on to become a barrister, that sort of thing. Why is it when captions are in TV and movies, when, if based on a true story, one of you always reads it out loud, even the other person can clearly say, see what it says and, re- and reads it themselves? Why do we do that? I do it. I do it. <laughs> why? Why is it when you watch a documentary? So, like I said, and it comes up and it's like, say, so, oh my god, his Becky Betty's mum became a barrister. <laughs> yeah, and then it says here, and then uh, it says here that she then died two years later. I know, Jamie. I can fucking read it. I can see it for myself. <laughs> And I'm always one of those ones as well that goes, oh, I wonder what happened to him. I'm going to Google it. It's literally just told me on the fucking TV. Why am I researching yeah. this? It's telling me the exact same thing I've just fucking read. But then it's always, sometimes it comes to me quite a bit, you read it really quickly because you think it's going to disappear. Even though 
there's a, there's a rewind function. You're like, oh, shit, that really just really on, quick, shit. Uh, uh, oh, oh, I missed it. Oh, what did it say? What did it say? And well, it's pause the screen. No, because the challenge is to read fast. If the people out there they're thinking, oh, what do you want about? No one does that. Then it's you. <laughs> Oh, going back, going back to the conversation of cats. Luckily, mine is not even remotely the same conversation. Thank fuck. But um, <laughs> I, I went to a kitty cafe this weekend. Okay. Yeah, not by choice. Um, it was Claire's son's birthday, and he wanted to go to the kitty cafe in Birmingham city centre. It's literally just a cafe full of cats running around. Yeah. Weird concept, but it got me thinking though. I was sort of sat there, I was looking, and I was like. What other animals could you do this with? Could you imagine just rocking on where are you going today? The penguin cafe. Just just walk in, there's just fucking penguins dawdling around the room. I, was like, I mean, it'd, it'd be it'd be fucking cold now, though, wouldn't it? It would have to be very cold now. I don't know why penguins is the first animal that came to my mind. I was just like, what else could you do this with? Dogs would be a fucking nightmare. No matter what you try yeah, and eat. Like, now with food around, yeah. Now with <laughs> food around, you know it, it, that's actually quite different. Rabbits, maybe. Oh, rabbit cafe would be ace. You could do rabbits. Um, there's not a lot you could do with. You could do it like a flamingo or anything like that. That'd be that'd be amazing. Style, wouldn't it? That'd be fucking awesome. They'd just be stood there judging you the entire time <laughs> on one foot. Like, look at these pathetic humans on two legs. Oh god, makes me sick, Steve. You know what I'm saying? Yes, Tony. Actually, I do. I do. These humans can't even balance very well, can they? No, they can't. Look at us balancing. They're not even paying us any attention. We should be in some sort of circus or some sort of talent show or something. We would absolutely slay it, Tony. Flamingo's got talent. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can guarantee you'd have people in there stood in front of them on one leg. Go, oh, fucking do that, Dave. It's not that hard standing on one leg. I'm doing it now. I wonder, I wonder they'd have to probably go up and like, take measure to see who's got the longer leg and then that. Like, you win. <laughs> Like, who can brush their feathers out whilst on one leg better or something like that? I don't know. It's just mental that they're pink. That's what blows my mind even further. It's just that they're, they're not a natural colour. <laughs> you love flamingos there. Well, God is up there going, hmm, I've got lots of black birds, literally crows, etc. ravens. Penguins are black and white. Hmm, this is getting boring. Let's, let's, let's fuck the bird system up a little bit, shall we? Let's fuck the birds up a little bit. Let's make a big fucker and sit there can only stand in water on one leg, I'm going to make it pink. <laughs> God was definitely drunk that day. He definitely was. <laughs> what have I done yet? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll make a snake. I'll make it one of the deadliest, deadliest we've ever, but it's a muscle. <laughs> no legs, it's got no arms, but fuck all. All right? I'll just make it one big fucking long thing. <laughs> I can its jaw. Well, it, it deadly, deadly, deadly as fuck, Jesus. Deadly as fuck. Okay, but it's actually got nothing apart from just one long muscle. <laughs> That'd be hilarious, Jesus. Do you, you know what I mean? I've done it anyway. Fuck, shut up, shut up. It's done. It's done. There we are. We we'll make different varieties of them. Some that aren't even deadly at all, and people don't tell the difference. So they shit themselves. Maybe. I don't want to have some fucking pink, but it's like come flamingos, peacocks. Oh. That's it's one of the wildest that I <laughs> We could have a normal bird, but on its back, giant fucking duster. Call oh, it was, call it peacock. Done. I was, I was happy with my joke. I didn't talk, I didn't talk for a long time. <laughs> oh, I didn't hear it. I'm sorry. I'm that sorry. broke my heart. That's all right. I'm sorry. Okay. Jamie, don't worry about it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I don't know I, did, I, just, I just thought it was funny to be like, let's see where they flame and go. And then, <laughs> and then, and then, and spoke over it. <laughs> but still, all right. Well, we'll just go to peacocks <laughs> instead. I mean, peacocks are an interesting thing because they're colourful as fuck, like almost like chrome. And then, like, you know, people have chrome cars need to get in the bin, but still. Like, I really want a blue, yellow, green, and purple, like, silvery colour. Like, get over yourself. But peacocks are literally like, it's walking around like, hmm, this is, this is nice, isn't it? Isn't it? I'm a nice colour. Yeah. I see. What's that? Oh my God, what's the fuck out? Look at me. Look at these fucking thousand eyes on my ass. You see that? Yeah. Yeah, look at, 
Oh, it's not on the P. Okay. <laughs> retreat, Kevin, retreat. <laughs> just look at the body. I'm just here having a pet. I was stretching, nothing more, nothing more. Just having a stretch, don't mind me. Ignore that, Peter, ignore that. That was nothing. Oh, yeah. Wanna fuck? <laughs> I can't find I can't find it. Where's where's the I bet you can find it now, can't you, you <laughs> sexy little fucker, eh? You randy bastard. <laughs> there is way too much animal sex going on at the start. Of this yeah, it's really way too much. <laughs> PCO point members into BCLity. <laughs> TMZ presents. We're, not. We're, not. We're, definitely, we're definitely not. We just thought it was funny not. conversations. Funny topics, guys, all right? Still. How are you, Jamie? Anyway, you are. <laughs> I'm very well, my friend. I'm very well. I'm a little bit sleepy, but what the fuck's new? Um, working nights at the minute, so there we are. Ah. The sleep pattern gets destroyed as always. <laughs> Woo! How about you? How are you? How are you, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm actually all right, man. I'm actually all right. And um, there's some things been going on behind the scenes. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm signing one of them pricks now. I think I'm hot shit because I'm like, there's things going on that I can't talk about. Um, <laughs> there's a personal things going on that uh, I'm currently uh, sorting, shall we say, at this current point in time. You are fully aware of said, of said things. Um, so I'm currently working on some pieces at the moment in my personal life to uh, get back on track, shall we say. Um, but yeah, I'm all right. I'm all right. It's uh, I'm absolutely knackered <laughs> if I'm honest. Be- uh, because I've this is now my fourth recording night in a row. Um, I've interviewed every night, I'm interviewing after we've done this, I'm interviewing tomorrow, and I'm just a bit worn out. I'm gonna be honest. Um, I'm not surprised. It, yeah, it also doesn't help that me and Braden play. Rocket League, and we played Rocket League every night for the last 10 days. That so it's probably like, doesn't help also. <laughs> no, so, and with with time going forward, up to the box going forward, oh, on, course, Sunday, yeah, on Sunday night, yeah. So I'm now playing till like 1am when I was playing till midnight. Yeah, I did sort that shit out. Um, <laughs> but there we are. So, yeah, just, just I'm shattered. I need, I need to try and get back into a bit more of a routine again, I think. Yeah, probably, probably definitely should. Yeah. So, um, but Jamie, before we um, start getting into the cruxy, cruxy part of the show, do you remember Scottish Pepper Pig? I do remember Scottish Pepper Pig. It's a highlight of the show. Good. Welcome to Story Time with Tom. Oh yes. So, this is called the Stolen Lunch. Okay, you ready? Okay, I'm ready. Right, guys. My co-worker got his lunch stolen and had agreed to let him watch the security camera tape. This is the most excited I have ever been at a job, ever. And I mean, ever. The lunch in question was shrimp fried rice, which means this escalates from a misdemeanor to felony, I have no doubt. Ace facts. Lunch was in the fridge for less than an hour before it vanished. No shrimp smell remnants in the microwave or kitchen area. This was a professional job. (laughs) <laughs> holy shit he's back he's watched the tape he knows who did it so the man whose lunch was stolen sits across from me the person who stole his lunch sits right next to me she left for the day before the investigation started according to the video this psychopath didn't even eat the food she took it out the fridge and threw it and buried it in the trash <sighs> Her motives remain completely unknown. In lieu of what he saw on the tape, he had decided not to press the matter anymore. I can't say I blame him. We don't know what this woman's fully capable of. Points to clarify. He bought the shrimp fried rice around 11.30am in takeout, put it in the fridge to chill until he takes his lunch at noon. So she had exactly a 30 minute window of time to do what she did. There was no intention of microwaving the food. Update. Okay, so when the dude watched the video with HR, they asked him, what do you want to do about it? He told them he was solely interested in who did it and that he didn't want to be responsible for someone getting fired. Fair play, fair enough, I feel. After charges were dropped, HR sent a company-wide email about not stealing people's lunches. She is scheduled to arrive at work in 20 minutes. My blood is on cocaine. (laughs) She (laughs) She has walked into the room. 
The room is dead silent. Dead fucking silent. Yet, there is a palpable explosive energy pulsing through everyone but her. From the moment she walked in, I've just been staring at her. Watched her open her email. She's now clicked us the goddamn HR email. Holy fuck, boys. Strap in. Here we go. Can't move. I simply <laughs> cannot move. Anything can happen right now. Just seeing the HR email, she sh- says out loud, Whoa! Someone stole someone's lunch? Who would do something like that? I may have to run out of the- I may have to run out of this room. After she said that, the shrimp guy responds. Well, yeah, it's not okay to throw someone's food away. We're all about to start screaming. <laughs> this shit's about to get crazier. Then he says, she goes, oh, was it your lunch? Be- beat, she continues, well, why would you go to HR about it? She has simultaneously denied her involvement and called the guy who saved her job a snitch. Do decide and went straight back to work. After she said what she said, she looks quite wittingly calm. This is real. This is happening. We know who did it, but we don't know why. It's a post-production company, so we're in fact open today. She's been sitting three foot from me this entire time. Unbeknownst to the guy and the woman, I just ordered three shrimp, I just ordered three shrimp fried rice plates for lunch, and we'll be hand delivering it to all of to, to them. <laughs> we took the fried rice from me with a big smile on her face, and she's eating it and loving it. This is utter ruthlessness. I love shrimp fried rice, she says. <laughs> I, wish I, I wish I could close up the neat little bow, but it appears that we may never know why she did it. Maybe she doesn't know why she did it. Either way, I'm now forced to work 40 hours a week next to a cold-blooded individual. She's going to be fucking CEO someday. It's wrong how much of the edge of my seat I was getting during that. I was like, wow. Oh, really? <laughs> like, well, I want to know what happened to her. That's why I said, I'm said, just sat here silent. Tell me more. Tell me more. What happened? <laughs> Why Absolutely you... amazing. I just thought it was funny <laughs> as fuck. Fucking that was story time with Tom. So was story time with Tom. <laughs> Good. Jamie, how's your week been, my friends? Oh, my week's been it's been a little bit quiet to be honest. I've been doing a lot of working. Um, as I said, I've been rehannering. I went to see the kids on Friday. I went nice. How was that? It was good, good fun. Lena was off school, so I went. I got there a bit earlier, so I spent a bit of extra time with Lena. Um, went out for Zach Claire's boy Zach on Sunday. Like I said, we went to Kitty Cafe and we had McDonald's and just had a chin, had a walk around. It was good fun. Uh, we've done a couple of great interviews. One you will hear not next week, but the week after. Ooh. And we've done a great interview for our friends at the Razor's Edge. And that's pretty much it. I've really done nothing. I've, it's been a very quiet week. Even turning to Becky, like, what have I done this week? She's like, nothing that I can think of. No, I didn't think so either. But there we are. Get ready, ready for the Hollybobs. Get ready for the Hollybobs. Yeah. Getting ready for Hollybobs. But the thing you are obviously going to want to know about, sir, is my adventures in 24 with Jack. Season 8, episode 19. Just started. Oh, damn. I, I'm going to quote the infamous Alkaline Trio and say... I was just a stupid kid last week. I take back every word that I said. Fuck me, this show is so good. Oh, I, I must have been in a slump or something last week. Or, I don't know, but something happened every week. I've just been like, what the fuck? Who the fuck? Why is she doing this? What's going on? Chloe's in charge. President Logan's back. Russians. What the fuck is going on? <laughs> oh, it's just so good. It's so yeah, good. Logan's back. Oh, that's a little bastard. I know. Oh, and the, oh, the scene with the, the president. <laughs> that, was, that wasn't very pretty. But oh, I was gutted, absolutely gutted when it worked out and it was a postponed like tape thing. Oh, oh, my heart bled for Jack. And then the obvious thing that's just happened, my heart was bleeding for him more. Oh, you could tell this was supposed to be the last series because they're sort of making Jack be like, fuck everyone, I'm out of here. <laughs> Wait for those last few episodes, mate. I can already tell. It hasn't even happened, but I just know where this is going. It's, oh, it's so good. It is. Uh, how do we say, Jeremy? How do we say it? Superb. Yeah. Oh. It is true. Don't do catchphrases, though, kids. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's pretty much it. I've, I haven't really done anything this week. What about you? 
Uh, the same, pretty much. We've done some wonderful interviews. Um, but we've got one out next week, and then there's a week off, and then there's one. Yeah, one more. That, there's there's a one tomorrow, or on Wednesday. That's going to be out the week after you return. So, yeah, it's all very much mental. But of course, we've also been doing bloody shitloads of uh, Razor's Edge stuff as well. So. Um, we've got a lot of interviews in for the race session. Make sure you're checking them out right now. Um, I've actually got another interview for them after this. Um, so we've got a lot of great, it's great. It's absolutely amazing. Like just, you know, to, to help our friends out, to be a part of other companies as well, to assist an interview for them as well as doing our own stuff. So uh, if you enjoy the progress of the podcast, please head over to the Razor's Edge, uh, over the Razor's Edge Rocks um, and uh, check out the support there as well. We've got some great interviews coming up. My interview with Ohms, uh, was just released this Tuesday uh, with Paul Waller. Um, how much he loves Kiss and Abba at the same time. It's absolutely fantastic. Good man. Um, so, Jamie, funnily enough, with the Razor Edge interviews that I've done bar last night, Kiss comes up a lot. <laughs> Isn't the greatest band um, on the planet? Well, I mean, that's probably going a bit too far. Um, <laughs> but, yeah. So, Please go and check out the Razor's Edge. Uh, well, if you enjoy our show, you'll absolutely love theirs. So, and it's all music based and all rock and metal based. Done by the fans for the fans. Um, you catch phrases here, kids. Absolutely not. It's definitely <laughs> theirs. Um, so, uh, other than that, man, just a lot of Rihanna in. A lot of Rihanna in. We started Ted Lasso. Uh, we're two episodes oh, yes. in on Ted Lasso at the moment. Um, I'm thoroughly enjoying it. I find it, it's, it's a great comedy. Um, but I'm also finding it's very, it can be cringe. And I'm not mm. a big fan of cringe. So um, I'm struggling to get through, if that makes sense. I'm watching yeah, it, yeah. I'm enjoying it, but I'm not like, I must watch the next one. It's like, oh, I'll give it a week or so, then I'll come back to it again. Um, so I've literally been binging Frasier and Gogglebox. Fair enough. Because it's easy watching, it, it's hilarious, and it's just nice to chill to. It's nice um, to have just like a chill program, and it? it's just like ah, I'll put it on yeah. one now. Just, it's just, it's, it's just there. It is Frasier. I well, I just watch it like I'm like glued. It was good to be a chill. I like piss myself laughing. It's so good. I'd love to get cancer ground on this show. It'll be oh. absolutely unbelievable. That'll be huge. Um, but yeah, other than that, I watched uh, the Scottish beat the Spanish in football last night. That was absolutely unbelievable. Unreal is the European qualifiers for football. Spain have lost twice since 2006. In oh, wow. So we had it third time the charm. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so, it was an incredible, incredible game. So everyone's going to be sulking when I go there next week then. Next week, like, hmm, stupid fucking Scottish. Maybe, maybe because they were giving it, the, the Spanish players were giving it a bit of. The grass was too long. I kept falling over. Oh, fuck off. It's just too long. This is, what? Well, I, this is why I don't really do football much, because it's just full of whinges and, you know, fucking, oh, he blew on me and I've broken my fibula. Um, well, yeah, no. Yeah, that, so, that, yeah, that, yeah maybe. I'm, not, I'm not of it. No. So, I watch the international games, but club wise I'm not so, like, I'm not really asked. Um, yeah, so that was absolutely fantastic. Uh um, that's about it, really, my friend. To be honest, it's not a lot that's really been going on. It's a lot of um, it's a lot of personal stuff. It's a quiet weeks lately, but that's never a bad mm. thing. Never a bad thing. No, I, I suppose. I suppose now we're all caught up. We better go check up with this this man right here. Yes, the only from Brave and Estate Cozy Car Man. What's been going on? All right. Is this thing on? Well, howdy doody, everybody. This is Braden Barry from Say We Can Fly, founder of Stay Cozy Clothing. Your one-stop shop for the coziest, most fashionable hoodies, t-shirts, and more. Gorsh, Mickey. That's right, folks. And we're proud to say that we are now sponsoring... The Chronicles of Podcast. Ouch. Hosted by Tom and Jamie. <laughs> like, you can get 10% off, man. That's right, Shaggy. Just use the special code, The Chronicles, at checkout. Oh, boy. Oh. The best advert ever, Jamie. Ever. Quite simply. Completely but, agree. Um, but now it's time for your favorite segment of the week. Yeah, it is. It's time for Callum's features. Do you want to know something? Callum will be able to tell you in Callum's Treachings. It's cereal soup. Ooh. Callum is back once again to treach the nation. All the wonderful nonsense that comes out of his brain and his mouth. 
So let's begin. Jamie, mm -hmm. what is Callum Trichiner's this week? It's more acceptable to wear zero shoes than one shoe. <laughs> I mean, it's got a point. It's definitely more acceptable. It, yeah. Because I think people think... But then again, do people think you're more mental if you walk around in socks and barefoot outside or they think you're more mental with one shoe on? Will they think you're homeless if you put one shoe? Depends if you're just walking normally or you're hopping on that one foot that's got a shoe on. Then it's nothing worse than walking on concrete barefoot anyway. This is very true. Yeah, and also, also walking in just one shoe feels so weird. I don't know how anyone can actually yeah. do that. I don't know what this is demonstrating, but it's... It's, it's a world champion <laughs> hopper. Yes, that is exactly what it is. But I used to, there used to be a famous person in Birmingham called Pete. Pete the Feet he was known as because he never wore shoes or socks. And no one thought he was weird. Granted, they gave him The Feet as his nickname. But he was just Pete. Everyone knew him. And he wasn't that weird. But I imagine if you walked around with only one shoe on... They probably would have thought it was a bit weird. If people walk home one, yeah, if people walk home one shoe on, flamingos would be very impressed. They're like, yeah. oh, they're learning. <laughs> they're, 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 look at them. Tony, look, he's, they're adjusting. They're adjusting to our kind, but I bet you can't do that in water. <laughs> no. Your shoe would get wet. Nothing yeah. worse than a wet sock, we know. You <laughs> land walking fuck. You have no <laughs> chance in the pond here with us. No, absolutely. <laughs> land walking fuck. Tony, are they copying us? Are they taking the piss? He's dyed his hair blonde and pink as well. What's going on? Is he taking the fucking piss out of this, Tony? If he turns up in a pink leotard, I'm going to knock him out. I'm just telling you, Tony, I'm just going to knock him out. I think it's more mental to wear one shoe than none. I agree, definitely. It's definitely more mental to wear one shoe. And it feels more mental to walk in one shoe than <laughs> Yeah, because you're fucking not lopsided and weird. I'd rather be like, ah. Then like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> I do it sometimes. Like, say we forgot something in the car, so I need to quickly run out. Like, I can't be asked to put my shoes on. I'll walk out and I'm literally just like, ah, 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 ah. I should have just put my shoes on. <laughs> you, do that, you do that weird hoppy type mental like run shit, don't you? I, uh, when you're trying to cross road and the car's coming really quickly or something, <laughs> the way that long legged runs, the weird, like, yeah, it's not really a run, but it's not a, like it's not a walk, it's a, just a, I don't want to fuck it, it's kind of like, it hurts, a hurts too much to run, but you want to walk faster than a walk, so your body just makes this weird amalgamation. Yeah, it's like your legs have gone before your body can get there. <laughs> it's fucking <laughs> hurts, let's get there. <laughs> still, anyway, we move on. What else, Jamie? It's Callum Trichin us this week. The invention of the golf cart turned out to be more popular than the sport itself. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, jackass. <laughs> Do you reckon, though, people are only about sport just to drive the carts? Oh, definitely. You know, I, 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 on. I was going to say, I've often thought, it must be cool to drive around in a golf cart, but I've never thought, I want to go play golf, so... Yeah, it's not the last thing on my mind, but I reckon they do it, and then I reckon they're absolutely wankers about it as well. You're walking... <laughs> pop, pop, and all that. You don't see what I'm driving here, Dave. Yes, lovely. It's a little cartridge, you know. Oh, but you have to be a member. You have to be a member. Oh, yeah. Okay. You now, you listen up. here, Rupert. I'm, I'm sick of your bullshit. Okay. <laughs> I'm sick of the way you talk down to me all the time. Okay. Yes, but you're not a member, Dave. All right. People with really posh twatty names like mine only get membership here. Quentin. Yes, I'm your seen Dave. <laughs> for the state of him, yes. It's an exclusive club. He's only here because his friend brought him. <laughs> uh, I'm, going, I'm, going to, I'm going to play this game that requires no skill whatsoever apart from twatting a ball with a tiny stick. Yeah, that's wonderful. Ooh. I'm going to twat it as far as I fucking can. <laughs> wonderful. It's gone 250 yards. I'll just get in my car, shall I, Dave? I'll see you down there in about a year. <laughs> Who fancies duck? Ask me the other golf club that does the exact same thing, but it's shaped a bit differently. Because you know, mm. I want to hit it. Once a driver it to hit it, smack yeah. it fucking miles, and then once like a wedge to chip it out of stuff. And then you've got different irons for whatever fucking. I don't know. I'm not a golfer. There's gonna be some golfing fans that are like, "You people are bricks. How dare you <laughs> desecrate our sport?" I spent seven grand on this bag of clubs. It's too heavy and too bulky to put anywhere. <laughs> so I hire a, I hire a peasant to walk it for me. That's the one that gets me, yeah. The ga the caddy or whatever they call them. The person that yeah. gets to carry the clubs. Like, just fucking drag your own club, you 
posh bastard. It's like, oh, it now. I'm too weak, Dave. I'm too weak, Quentin. I can't carry. Oh, here's Paul, the peasant. <laughs> you carry this, you little fucker. Oh, and by the way, I can't play this game in my normal trousers. My normal clothes. I have to wear my checkered trousers and my jumper with no sleeves on. Paul wants a pound coin. Paul wants a pound <laughs> coin. Carry my little club, said you little bitch. <laughs> yeah. There's people that like golf, and that's fair. If you like golf and you enjoy it, that's fair. But I, it's literally a Tory sport. So not for me, thank you. It's really amusing. Paul wants a pound coin. <laughs> they wouldn't fucking lose the money, though. Oh, yeah, I know. Right, PJ Tors and shit. There's nothing wrong with the game of golf. It's just all the bullshit that surrounds it, like you say. <laughs> I play it once. Before, it's fucking all dreadful. Our, all our golf fans are having massive goers. Um, and finally, Jamie, <laughs> what else is Callum Trichinus this week? Meatballs have to be the laziest named food in existence. <laughs> <laughs> It's not rock, is it? <laughs> that and chicken. What part of it is it? It's chicken, all right? That's all you need to know. <laughs> yeah, but then you can say about orange. That's true. It's just an orange. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think orange might actually be up there with a, as a contender. What's this? It's an orange. Why? Look at colour. It tastes like orange. That's so weird, isn't it? It tastes like it. It is one. And it's the colour. Um that, that's so funny. I said, I don't know who invented that. Of like, oh, I mean, what if I just met, like, the kids just go, like, la, 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 I was passing on it and then went, oh, daddy, I've made a ball. Like, meatball, look. Meatball. Meatball. <laughs> God, dragon's dead. Now, nah, <laughs> listen to you. I want 50 grand for the entire ownership of the company for meatballs. <laughs> <laughs> I'll offer you everything for no percent. Um, <laughs> we're originally going to call it beef ball, but it sounded a bit weird. Well, actually, we're going to call it the F word, but we can't say it anymore, so uh, it's definitely a beef ball. <laughs> that took me a minute. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what I wanted to call it, but my wife said I'm a fucking prick, so you know, I wanted to call it F word, you know, like, you know, like, actually, weirdly really thinking about it, because mince is also in there. Yeah. Are they. That's a conversation we don't want to be having right now. It's just different seasonings, I think, because they're, they're a unique flavour. The Yeah, not going to say it, because, you know... Yeah, be, no, we don't, yeah. Say, we don't, we don't say those words around here. But yeah. Even though we're um, not meaning an offensive way, you know, it's like the people, the things that are listening would be like, they said that word, get them off the air. So, yeah. But yeah, I love it. So yeah, orange are there. I mean, chicken, it's because it is a chicken, so you can't really... So it's lazy because it's the name of the animal. Yeah, but at the same time, you've got pig, but we don't call it pig, we call it pork. True. Yeah, fair. I mean, we don't call it cow, lamb, we call it so, beef. Yeah, lamb is lamb. So. Lamb, the lamb's another one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Baby sheep. Um, I just love that they've got a massive sausage and when. I mean, it's really hot. <laughs> but what could we actually cook? It's kind of like hot sausage, it's weird. So. Well, you know what? We've been, we've got your chicken and you've got your, your you know, your lamb. And, uh, just call it a dog. <laughs> just, just call, do you know what? I can't be out. We've been here for 12 fucking hours and I can't be bothered anymore with these stupid names. Just call it a fucking dog and let's get out of it. Okay. Then. What, what the fuck is it called a hot dog? I feel like I don't want to know the origins of that name, actually, now I'm thinking about it. <laughs> yeah, you might end it down a rabbit hole here, but fuck, screwed up penises. Okay, well, no one wants that. Exactly. <laughs> I, I shall call it meat ball. <laughs> meat ball. Meat ball. Oh, <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> Therefore, I am a scholar. I am a pioneer. <laughs> My life is complete. <laughs> I really like that. <laughs> Fucking just killing us again. Love this man. Love this man and his clever little brain. We do love, we do love Callum's restrictions. Uh, they are oh. absolutely superb every single week, Jamie. Every so, single week. So, every single week. Super. So, the only problem now is, I have to follow. Yeah, you do. Santos Journal. Ooh.
and welcome to another edition of Tom's Journal. So, Jamie. Yes. Someone just said, Coca-Cola can remove rust from metal. Imagine what it's doing to your body. Get rid of the rust, idiot. Wait, that's not how it works. <laughs> well, hmm, let's see. I've been drinking this soda now, and my body's rust-free. Not sure where you're getting your facts from. That's a fucking good point. That's a very, very good point. So if anyone's got, like, pins in their elbows and shit, they ain't getting rusty if you keep drinking Coke. Exactly. Coke for healthy joints? <laughs> Would like to point out we are not medical professionals. I may work in a hospital, yeah. but doesn't mean I know shit all about health. Don't take That's advice right. from us. <laughs> that reminds me, I was uh, when I was working earlier. Uh, one of my delegates asked me if they could come on the podcast to talk about data and healthcare, and I was like, eh, "It's not really that kind of podcast." I'll be honest. <laughs> if you want us to look at you and go, "Huh, good job." <laughs> you know what you should do, Jamie. You know what you should do. This is definitely for you. You should ask a rival dad. If he likes his vehicle, then tell him you're considering getting one for your daughter when she turns 16. Absolutely brutal. (laughs) 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 So I can't really do that because they go, what about your vehicle? They go, you leave my push bike alone, you. (laughs) Yes, healthy driving. Healthy driving, I like that. I'm stealing that. Do you know what, right, Jamie? UK holidays are too expensive to be in the UK. This like, I get St. Ives is nice, but sure not £500 a night, and you can still see a Tesco and Royal Mail vans. <laughs> hey, what is what I love? Your holiday in the UK, you're like, oh, it's nice to be away, but there's so many things that remind you of home. And then when you go abroad, you're like, Oh, fuck me, there's a Tesco. Isn't that wonderful? Let's take a picture of Tesco in Spain. Fucking British people. Every there's time. no pleasing British people. No. It literally looks like a restaurant and you go, I don't want really that foreign book. You got any chips? <laughs> yeah, fish and chips, please. For <laughs> fuck's sake. My dad came around yesterday. We were talking about the holiday we're going to in Spain. And he was like, it's a lovely Italian restaurant. I was like, we're going to Spain. Why are we going to an Italian restaurant? <laughs> Where else in Spain are you going? Uh, Mercia. Oh, nice. About an hour away from Alicante, apparently. Stunning. It was my, uh, someone I know just got back from Alicante. It was 27 degrees, so enjoy that. Yeah, I've been looking at the weather. Yesterday it was like 27, 28 degrees most day. Like, it's it's blood stuff all over again. Woo! Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> the best thing about, Europe, best thing about <laughs> European countries is you get breezes and wind and that sort of thing. You don't get like in the UK where it's just a dome of heat. Although apparently it's forecast of rain on our first weekend there. I bet it's like I bet it's like hot rain though would be lush. Probably when he's <laughs> like in a shower. <laughs> yeah. But Jamie, I was walking in the jungle, right? And I saw this lizard on his hind legs telling jokes, which I found weird. So I turned to the local tribe and said, that, that lizard's really funny. And he went, mate, that's not a lizard. It's some comedian. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that is one of the best or worst jokes you've ever told. Oh, that was great. <laughs> fucking that hell. That was fucking great. <laughs> Fuck's sake. But going on to another point, right? Why is spending hours on right move looking at houses you could never afford so fun? Oh, it's the 13 million three bedroom flat in Mayfair. Yeah, I'm not really sure the layout's right for my IKEA coffee table. <laughs> when we were looking to buy a house, we always used to just look at the most bizarre shit we could find. You've got to. It's just fun to look inside of other people's houses as well. Just why not? Let's go to buy one day. That's a story for another time. I don't mind you, Jamie. But if I was an Italian plumber, whose girlfriend was constantly being imprisoned in capsules by an evil fire-breathing lizard. I would simply not take part in recreational go-kart races with aforementioned, aforementioned lizard. One way to try and get her back. <laughs> Race it. It's such a weird... <laughs> it's such a weird concept, isn't it? You keep stealing my missus, you bitch. What the fuck are you doing here? Well, you fancy a race? Yeah, all right, then. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> the, the only thing is, Bowser, I might throw tortoise shells and banana skins at you. Yeah, it's fine. It's all part of the race, isn't it? <laughs> you get all your mates involved. We make it a tag team, but sure, why yeah, the fuck not? It. Get yeah. everyone in. <laughs> you can bring Waluigi and Wario in if you want from the alternative universe. <laughs> How many times does Bowser need to kid, kidnap Peach now? Like, just take the fucking hint, mate. She don't want you. Do you know what, Jamie? Right? I'm so thankful to have such a great boss. We want to congratulate, send congratulations out to Jonathan Warrington for being the employee of the month. Jonathan will get a three day and night all expenses paid hunting and fishing trip to Arkansas for his hard work. So, let's reiterate this is my brother's page. He owns his own company, he is the boss. He is literally the only employee. <laughs> Basically, I'm going on holiday and I wanted this to sound good. Yeah, I thought it was absolutely fantastic. <laughs> that is superb. I'll give you a couple more. <laughs> Six year old Daddy, do dragons fart fire? Look, I don't know. I thought you went to college. <laughs> Why do I want to know that, man? Is that good, do they? I want to know. Did dragons part fire? I mean, they're not real, mate, so I'd probably not. No, probably. that's a good point, actually. Yeah, why am I thinking this through so much they're not real? Yeah. Oh, my God, do they actually do? <laughs> do they actually? If they were to exist... <laughs> oh, well, they don't. Never mind. I could just write it and it makes it true. And finally, Jamie, one for you, because this made no sense to me. I had to write a reread it about 15 times to make sense of it. My toddler asked me to give her chicken nuggets a checkup. After giving all the nuggets a medical exam, I realized my toddler was asking for ketchup. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know what's more painful is the fact that that is something I would do or the, <laughs> just, <laughs> the fact that that person didn't realise he wanted the fact the kid didn't stop him either to go no yeah, yeah, the kid was going daddy what are you doing <laughs> I know if that was a living she'd be like no I want tomato sauce sort it because she's a bossy turd She's got like the fucking defibrillator. Boop. Oh, yeah, it's Daddy, I want a checkup. Yeah, it's what I'm doing, love. Boop. Gonna give me some 15 mils of MNF on stat. <laughs> Definitely <laughs> dead, love. I'm sorry. It's just not saving it. Yeah, it's fine. There you go. You can eat that one. <laughs> and that was another edition of Tom's Journal. Beautiful, beautiful journal. Thank you very much. Sir. I thoroughly <laughs> appreciate it. It's getting a lot harder to find funny shit on the internet these days. I'm not going to lie with how many episodes we've done now. I'm like, fuck, I'm really running out. <laughs> but, you know, if I keep providing, I always will. So it's always a nice little uh, bit of je ne sais quoi to the end of the show. So It's about getting into schools and talking to young people because, you know, I, I know that people can change. Uh, and, it, and it's about talking to people and getting them to understand and perhaps step back from violence and, and prejudice and whatever. And we just need to work together and keep on the good fight there. Absolutely. Hey there guys, we are ecstatically happy to announce that we are associated with the Sophie Lancaster Foundation. The times are changing and with the unfortunate death of Sophie, those changes have made a massive impact for the future. If Sophie was with us still today, I can guarantee what you are doing will still be reaching so many lives of young teenagers, young adults, and those who wish to be as different as possible. So thank you very much. To find out more about this incredible foundation and all the work they do, and more importantly, how you can help, head on over to www.sophielancasterfoundation.com. <clears throat> Mr. Stevens. Hi. Thought it's participation time.
I say, bitch. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to participate in Jamie's participation challenge. This week, I said, we all like to think about TV and movies that we watch, but sometimes our brains go a little bit into overdrive. So this week, we are asking, what are your favourite TV slash movie fan theories? What say you, Mr. Stevens? I haven't got any because I don't like, I don't do all that sort of shit, but... I did find out recently that Brum, the car, was called yes. Brum because he's from Birmingham, not because he goes Brum Brum. <laughs> not know this. That. No, I absolutely no idea. Yeah, he lives in Borton on the water, but he's from Birmingham. Yeah, I didn't know. I James thought it was called Brum because he was a car. But it's, no, he's called Brum because he's from Birmingham. Little fact would be there, ladies and gentlemen, those who didn't know. I love that. I thought he was called Brum because he goes Brum Brum. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> Let's get some audience answers. Actually, I realised I didn't say mine. My favourite one, although it's daunting as anything, is the Finding Nemo one. That the whole of Finding Nemo is basically Marlin's imagination and his way of dealing with grief after the fish that I've forgotten the name of basically eats all of his babies and kills his wife. It's all kinds of fucked up. Who's Marlin? Marlin's the dad in Finding Nemo. It's Nemo's dad. Oh, uh, okay. So the base end, finding Nemo doesn't happen because he he gets knocked out and hits his head after the big fish attacks. And everyone's saying the film is actually his imagination and his way of coping with grief from losing everyone. I was like, fuck, that's dark. Jesus Christ, yeah. yeah. But let's get some audience answers. In one that really made me laugh, Ollie Roylance. My theory is that Andrew Tate thinks he's in the Matrix. <laughs> I hope he says lots of forever, the prick. I know, right? He's an absolute fucking knobhead. <laughs> oh. Gemma Vilks says, I think that Mr. Bean is an alien, and that's why he drops from the sky from a bright light at the start of the episode, and he's confused by human ways. Interesting. I like that. I like that a lot. <laughs> it's very interesting. Lydia Manson says... What about the Rugrats theory where all of the babies are part of Angelica's imagination because she is lonely at home due to her parents working so much? That's fucking dark. Like it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure why you'd imagine Phil and Lil. They're fucking annoying. George Nicholson. Jeff Nicholson, not George. Why did I say George? Anyway, Jeff Nicholson. The events of Greece are what Sandra hallucinates as her brain shut down, panicking for breath, drowning on one of her summer days. So it makes perfect sense with the flying car bit at the end, because she heads towards death. That's, again, really fucked up. I know it's in Greece, so I can't comment. I've seen it, but I don't remember it very well. But yeah, a lot of these are analogies for very dark things. Shay Strickland, this is one I've heard before, and I really like this one. The theory that Winnie the Pooh characters all represent different mental illnesses, like Eeyore is depression, Piglet is anxiety, and so on and so forth. Tigger is ADHD. I like that. That's That's clever. Quite, it's yeah. clever, isn't it? Graham White. I believe that Indiana Jones is just Han Solo having a dream. Yeah. <laughs> Fair. Yeah, I like that one. Right. right. Graham Arnold. He's given us quite a few this one. Recess. The kids are all dead and their ghosts are haunting the school. So that's why you get so many stereotypes of kids from different eras all in one place. Okay. Love Recess. Watch out. I know, right? Don't ruin Recess. Wally. There are hundreds and thousands of dead ships just drifting out in space. The commercial we see from for the ships mentioned during the movie, mentions that there will be multiple starships launching each day, leading up to the flagship, the one we see in the film launching. Then at the end of the movie, after they return to Earth, we see a series of mosaics decrypting events all over the following decades, where more plants grow, animals are reintroduced, etc. Yet no other ships seem to return. We know hundreds launched, yet only one ever comes home. Bom, bom, bom. Never seen Wally, so I can't, I can't make any comment. <laughs> Back to the Future, Doc keeps showing up to save Marty because Marty died that many times. I like this one. This is clever. Oh. Is, Biff chases Marty to a roof where he forces Marty to jump to his death. Doc goes back in time. There he is to save him. 
Biff chases Martin down, Marty down a tunnel to run him over and kill him. Doc goes back in time, drops a rope to save him right at the last minute. Mad Dog lynches Marty, killing him. So Doc goes back in time to turn up with his rifle and save Marty right at the end, etc., etc. So Doc just keeps going to save Marty. I like that one. I like that one a lot. That's good. I've never heard that before. And he also says, Peter Pan, he's actually the angel of death and collects the souls of dying children. That's why they never grow up. That's fucked up. Why are they all so dark? Why can't there be any happy fun time theories here? What's wrong with people? Welcome to the human race. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Ryan Williams. He's got some good ones here. So, so conspiracy and fan theories are a rabbit hole that I fall down a little too easily. So here's the top five that I've known for a while. The Rugrats are a figment of Angelica's imagination because she was a lonely child, so she imagined the friends of her parents having kids so she could have friends to play with. So the theory is that all the kids... Jesus Christ, it's get darker and darker. The theory is that all the kids died at birth. Tommy was a stillborn, and that's why Stewie's always making toys that the son he never knew. The, the Devils? The Devils? I can't remember whose parents are. Had an abortion, so Ange- Angelica imagined a boy and girl twin because she didn't know the gender. Chucky and his mom die at birth, which is why Chaz is always nervous. Why are they so fucked up? I'm going for a happy fun time one next week. This is just not not how I planned this to happen. The Breakfast Club is really a bunch of students who died and are in purgatory. They're helping each other find peace with the lives that they're left behind. What the fuck? The vehicles in cars are AI that adapted the personality of their owners before the purge of organic life. That one I like. That's great. (laughs) That is brilliant. Harry Potter is a malnourished, delusional and abused boy who imagined the events of the books and is still locked in the Dursley's closet. What the fuck? And last but not least, Scooby-Doo. Fred and Fred and Daphne are swingers. Velma is bi and Scooby and Shaggy are the stoners. I don't think there's ever denying the last one. I think that's a <laughs> solid fact. And last but not least, I put this one last just because it made me laugh so much. It's absolutely brilliant. And it's Jerry Keane, ladies and gentlemen. A one, a good one is that Indiana Jones was absolutely no use and not needed whatsoever in Raiders of the Lost Ark. The Nazis still got hold of the Ark and all died because they opened it. So if Indy hadn't have been there, all that would have happened anyway, all that would have happened is the Nazis got the Ark and they all opened it and they would have died. Therefore making his adventure, was great to watch, totally, completely fucking irrelevant. Brilliant. I love that. <laughs> One of the most acclaimed movies of all time. Fucking pointless. Brilliant. Really made me laugh. We really enjoy when you all get involved in Jamie's Participation Challenge. So thank you so much to everyone that participated this week. If you enjoy Jamie's Participation Challenge, Tom's Journal, Callum Street Chains, the absolute shit we see at the beginning and the interview, you'll enjoy the other 70 editions of the product of the podcast wherever you get your podcast from, whether it be Google, Spotify, or Apple, etc. etc. We are also on YouTube at the Chronicles of Podcast. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure you hit the bell to get notified when new videos are released. And make sure you comment, comment, comment. Thank you, Ron. You can find all of our interviews and episodes are on there. All of our w, uh, hashtag WWW way back when is on there. That's all our previous interviews from our old channels. All of our Bloodstock uh, interview, live interviews are on there. Our Bloodstock blogs on there. And our Dublin Press blog is on there as well for you thoroughly to enjoy. Lots and lots of content for you to get into your faces. You can also find us on Facebook at the Chronicles of Podcast. Make sure you press like, share it everywhere so it makes balance, send us some memes and gifts, whatever you want. Stop emailing us and messaging us about fucking YouTube analytics, though. Jamie, whilst <laughs> else you're on, uh, what else are you looking for us? Where else can you find us on there? Uh, you can find us sitting there on Spotify, listening to everything you can find by Fury, Hands Off Gretel, Merciful Fate, you know, whatever our wonderful guest put her diddly hands to. Absolutely, or on the Twitter app at TCO Pod. Whilst you're doing that, listen to Becky's bands and find us on Twitter. Where else can you find us? You could sit in a spinny chair going, Wee, I'm a duck's penis. Absolutely, or on the Instagram at TCO Pod. We're also on LinkedIn at the Chronicles of Podcast. Come connect us on there. We are also on the TikTok at TCO Pod. Come and find us on there. Go look for Jamie's Chesty Hawks video. There's also a lot of uh, highlight videos in there as well, which are, are just fantastic. Um, I thoroughly enjoy watching on there on a daily basis. Um, and you can also come on down to our beautifully brand spankingly sexy and wonderful little website at www.podcast.com. You can find out all of our others on there, all of our episodes and shows are on there, all of our affiliations and sponsors are on there. 
And of course, the Chronicles of Podcast shop is on there as well, where you can get all your TCO pod merch. And trust me, it's beautiful. That's it. Yeah. Follow us on all the socials. Come on down. This is the show of the week. Support us. Just get subscribed on that YouTube. Let's get subscribing and get buying a t-shirt or two. Before we get out of here, shall we say thank you to a few of our friends? Do it. Cool. Go on then. Every single week, you will hear beautiful, delicate music on this show. And that music is brought to you by one man, Mr. Singer Songwriter himself. Matt Roberts. Go check out Matt on all of the social medias at Matt Roberts Music. Go follow him on YouTube. Go follow him on Spotify, wherever you get your music from. And go and listen to his brand new album, Light of Day. It is fantastic. No, it's superb. Go and check it out right now, wherever you get your music from. And as I say, make sure you're following Matt on all of the social medias because he does have a new exciting project coming very soon, which we can't wait to check out. And we will tell you all the details when he allows us to. But go and follow it now so you can see it before we even tell you about it. And of course, we have to say thank you to Mr. Braden Barry and his Stay Cozy Clothing. Head on over to www.staycozyclothing.com or download the smartphone app. Have a look what's on there. There's a sale right now because there's going to be some brand new lines coming very soon, which we cannot wait to see. But whatever you like at the moment, add one of them to your basket, including, I hope, that Sophie Lancaster collaborative T-shirt of 50% of the profits go to the foundation. And then once you get to the checkout, enter that discount code, The Chronicles, and get yourself 10% off your order. A little gift from Mr. Barry to you guys. But while if you want to throw that extra little bit of support to Braden Barry, like we know you do, go check out all of his music for Say We Can Fly, because he's just released a brand new album, Beneath the Roses. It is absolutely fantastic. It is I know all bands say this, and I say this about their latest release, but it's the best thing he's ever done. It is incredible. Go and check it out right now. We cannot promote it enough to you guys. Go and check it out right now. Well, in about 10 minutes' time once the show's finished. And, of course, we have to say a massive thank you to the Sophie Lancaster Foundation. They are stamping out prejudice, hatred, and intolerance everywhere. We cannot wait to be supporting these guys. We've got a huge summer planned with them. But in the meantime... Head on over to www.sophielancasterfoundation.com. Click on that hate crime tab and fill in that questionnaire. That questionnaire is so important. If you've ever been treated differently because of the music you listen to, because of the way you dress, anything, no matter what it is, if you've been treated differently simply for being a part of the alternative community, then we need your feedback because it is a strand of hate crime. Whether the police and the laws want to admit it or not, it is. There is no doubt about it. What happened to Sophie proves that for the fact she was targeted simply because of the way she was dressed. And it still happens today. It happened to me. It happened to Mr. Stevens when we were younger. So how about we finally put this to a stop? So please help us help them fill in that questionnaire, share it with your friends, share it with your family, and please support us doing that. And last but not least, massive thank you to this handsome devil right there. Right back at you, my friend. Right back at you, Jamie. Another absolutely wonderful episode today. Absolutely glorious. 80 editions. Yeah, and we're looking forward to seeing you for the next episode, next edition, next week. For the Chronicles of Bill Cox. But as for now, we'll see you all next week. Goodbye, everybody. Bye.